Okay, I have a confession to make. I'm addicted to Albion Online. What is he doing, man? It's summer here in the Philippines, so I've been recently hard at work going outside only 40 degrees and helping manage the building site of our work in progress home. It's been going great. There's been a few ups and downs, but that's not the main point of this video. It's that I've been trying to find good mobile games to play while working. Who the f are we kidding? I'm just sitting here. I can't even lift the hollow block. Fortunately, this video popped up in my feed not that long ago and it reintroduced me to Albion Online. If you're an MMO enjoyer, then I'm sure that you've probably heard of this game. From a thing or two, it's consistently on all of the top 10 MMO videos on YouTube that we MMO players always watch, even though we know that the list doesn't change, it stays the same. You might have also heard about Albion through YouTube ads. You know that ad? Where the guy with a cool wizard's voice says, Albion Online, Online. Online. is a sandbox MMORPG, MMO RPG where you, you write your, your own story type story. Story. That guy needs a mint. Also, he needs to get his throat checked. Holy. The game was released back in 2017 for PC as a buy to play or wait was it for subscription i i honestly forgot whatever it was it didn't get as much attention as they were hoping for so they went free to play in 2019 where it got a huge influx of players i remember watching a lazy peon video about it and i was gonna try it out but i was deep into my warframe addiction at that point so it wasn't until 2021 when they released their cross-platform update that I heard from this game again. And with the pandemic keeping us locked into our houses, I decided to give the game a good crack, you know? A good one-two punch of a try. A good... I can't think of any more metaphors. So hot. So I downloaded it on my phone, right? Waited for all the installations to complete and ultimately uninstalled the game after less than 10 minutes. Okay, okay, it most likely wasn't the game's fault. I was using my Samsung A21s, a phone that wasn't really meant to play hardcore video games. Only game it could run was Angry Birds. <gasps> so I installed it on my laptop with an i5 and a GTX 1650 and played there instead. You know how people have that one MMORPG? That they always keep being nostalgic about. Some have OSRS, World of Warcraft if you're a boomer, Terra if you have brain damage. Albion Online was not that game for me. It was Pet Forest. If you guys don't know about Pet Forest, then let me fill you in. Because it was the back in grade school. It was an isometric browser-based MMORPG where you leveled up by grinding mods and completing quests. It had awesome turn-based combat. Just talking about it makes me feel sad already because it shut down before I even hit high school, I think. Man. Okay, moving on. Albion Online reminded me so much of that game the moment I hit the tutorial island. Not necessarily because it had similar UI or similar art styles, but because of the density of the players. Keep in mind that I haven't played an MMORPG since Pet Forest server shut down. I was on my multiplayer League of Legends. <laughs> Dota 2 CSGO Valorant Brain Rot for a hot minute. So seeing that many players was very nostalgic for me. Remember when I wasn't addicted to League? That was the good days. And when you went to one of the main cities? My shitty laptop was so hot you could cook an egg in it. Anyways, 2021 was a weird year for me. College was ramping up. Genshin Impact was a huge grade and weirdly enough I had a hard time keeping up with my sleep schedule weird right <laughs> coincidences are so weird also with 2021 Albion online servers were based in America ping was crazy high here if you're living in the Philippines all of that piled on top of one another made me unfortunately drop the game altogether that was until last week where I watched this video and installed it on my now fairly powerful PC and new phone to try out while sitting under the scorching hot sun. Why is it so hot? The game is amazing. It has tons of depth to it. 
much more than I expected a mobile MMO to have. It also has Asia servers now, which is a huge W for Filipino players. I heard that Europe servers also just released. Right now, during the recording of, of this video, they just broke their highest player concurrent record. You don't hear MMOs doing that nowadays. The Albion world is separated in different zones, which have four different categories. Blue zones are beginner friendly zones, lower loot, low tier resources, but safe from high level mobs and other players. Other players? Hit the foot deal? The game is a PvP MMORPG by the way. The main focus is PvP, player versus player. How many times do I have to say PvP before you- Blue zones are pretty chill, you know? Most new people stay there for a while, scared of the dangers of the other zones. But it's like playing chess against a bot on easy mode. Like playing basketball against a 5 year old, you know? I know it sounds safe and fun. Right now, it feels so good to see that little bitch cry, right? But eventually, it will get boring. And that's where the yellow zones come in. You guys know how this works, right? Harder zone, harder mobs, better loot. Nice, right? This is also the zone where people start to see more PvP action. But not by much. Since PvPing in the yellow zones doesn't really give you that much and you still need to flag up to PvP with other people but it's enough to give you a taste of the real thing. Red zones are the next step in difficulty. Same thing, better rewards, more fame which is what they call EXP in the game by the way. Better resource nodes and much much more PvP. Red zones are where the full loot aspect of the game starts out. Full loot PvP is essentially Minecraft death. Every time you die, be it from a mob, a single person, or an army of Grimage campers, every single item you have, even your armor, drops on the ground, just like at Minecraft. This is usually where MMO players check out, and honestly, I get that. Why the hell am I grinding for good gear if I could just lose it all? Isn't that dumb? The main point of MMOs for most people is progression. To lose that on one death feels like shit. And I absolutely agree. That's why I never really understood the appeal of hardcore WoW. It feels like a waste of time, right? When I first played the game, I had the same feeling too. But the longer I played, the more I realized that the game's progression isn't tied on the gear itself, but on the destiny board. Which looks familiar. The destiny board is where all your EXP goes into. In Albion, there isn't really a traditional leveling system like other games. What you level is what you use. You use swords often, you level them up, making you more proficient with them, no matter what tier or how good the sword is. What about bows, staffs, spears? What about armor? Cloth armor, light armor, medium armor, heavy armor. Every time you use a pickaxe to mine ore, you get EXP from that each level up increasing your gathering speed, your gathering amount percent, etc, etc. Same goes for stone hammers, skinning knives, gathering hoe, the list goes on and on. It doesn't even end there. Every time you cook, your cooking proficiency levels up, making potions, crafting gear, refining materials. Every activity you do in the game gives you fame slash exp for that specific activity leveling them up and making you better at doing that thing this is bar none the best thing about albion online you could choose what you want to specialize on be a max level potion brewer the fastest tree chopper in the world the strongest great axe user that wears a cloth helmet leather boots and a metal chest plate the fuck who the fuck wrote this script what i'm essentially saying is that the destiny board is the progression because of this fact i treat the gear i wear on albion as consumables more than anything else another fun fact in albion is that one-on-one -on -one situations is more skill based than it seems an experienced player with better gear and better levels on that gear can match up with some rando with the highest gear available. Consider of wasn't losing your gear every time incentivize you to not bring good gear and just bring the bare minimum? Yes, that's the meta actually. It's absolutely idiotic to bring tier 8 gear on red zones when you don't even know what you're doing. Especially since all it takes is two experienced gankers with tier 4 gear to steal that off of your corpse. Every time you die on the red zones or above, some of your gear can be looted by other people, while some of the other gear just gets destroyed, incentivizing the player economy 
to create more of that item and avoiding stock inflation that's why being an armor maker is still a viable method getting silver in the game after so many years you're seeing the economic circle now right it's crazy keep in mind that i'm only explaining the basics of the game there's a bunch of stuff i haven't even talked about like the black market corrupted dungeons the arena and the fourth zone type of the game the black zones you know the drill better resources better loot stronger monsters it's also the home of tons of hardcore albion players and is on a separate continent huge guilds control these areas making them very dangerous for players to go through so i recommend that when you do go to the black zones because the exp is so good you're not gonna resist the temptation no matter what wear something that you are willing to lose people usually equip tier 4 equipment that's the standard meta this video has gone on for far too long we've forgotten the main point of it is albion a good mobile mmorpg if you like jumping into dungeons, killing mobs in the red zone, farming for EXP in the black zone, then the mobile version has an inherent disadvantage to PC. You could never compare phone controls to the position of a mouse. And when your control scheme is similar to MOBAs like League of Legends or Dota 2, the power gap is too huge to ignore. However, if you are like me, who plays Albion solely for life skills, then you'd be happy to know that Albion is the best mobile MMO I've played in that aspect. Being a life skiller in Albion is pretty chill, especially if you are just like me, who just farms for low tier resources in the yellow and blue zones. Remember the meta in Albion Online? It's low gear equipment, making people like me who farm for materials of low tiers have a constant stream of buyers that's using it to refine their materials. I usually just go around with my bear mount and break stones to sell in the market, making it a pretty chill experience. It's not chill here though, like what the fuck, it's so hot, god damn. Anyways, I will be playing a lot of this game in the future, so don't forget to subscribe if you liked what you watched. I'm definitely playing more of this game. Well, until May 22nd that is, since watering waves drops that day. The hell is that? Kong Kai Star Rail? Wait, 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 w